What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to talk about, that's right, Starfield mods, in particular, the Creation Club. So recently, Bethesda just announced that, A, we have a Starfield update. You no longer can have mods that alter the .ini file because the .ini file, you know, was causing issues with sound and some other glitches and might be causing issues with loading or, or load orders, right, in the mod. So they removed that and they took out the .ini, uh, you know, mods. And, you know, you can't upload mods with the .ini file uh, manipulated anymore. That's part of their stability update. To me, this is fair because, you know, Skyrim is the same way. And they're working on a fix, so hopefully they find a fix to where, you know, you can alter the, the .ini file and you can have more of those in-depth mods that modify that. But for right now, that's a good thing that they took that off because there are a lot of console players who aren't familiar with modding. There are a lot of PC players. This is their first time using mods, you know, whatsoever, and they expect these things to work, you know. They expect these mods to work and they, they expect it to, to be seamless because it's coming through Bethesda, right? It's coming through the creations, especially if you pay for them. That's what we're going to get into today. Because let me tell you, these paid mods are not up to, to, to the quality they need to be to be paid for. Now, the good thing is there aren't a lot of paid mods, but the paid mods that are there are going to affect console players the most and going to affect casual players the most. So I feel like they do they do need reviews. They need to be they do need to be, you know, someone needs to go over them and talk about them. So that's what I'm going to do today. We have three mods to go over, three of the paid mods. We have the um Starfield Compendium where it helps you search materials and things like that on planets, which isn't too bad because we do kind of need that. Right. We do need this. We do need that because it's hard to find, you know, resources and materials uh, here. I have I'm going to do the ancient Mariner module. We're going to go over this real quick and we're going to go over the Starfield compendium. This is a featured mod. Now, the thing about this is, I mean, it looks cool, but in practice, I'm not sure that you really need it, especially for the price that it is. It is lacking a lot of these features. So when this it says current features, keep in mind this is the current these are the current features. You search planet hosting resources. You can filter planets. That's it. None of this other none of these other features are even there yet. So Xbox support system level faction all of, none of this stuff is none of this is even there. But it's up on the site. And they're charging for it. We're going to get into that, okay? That that's all there. Now the the highlight of everything is going to be Derek the um the companion mod. Uh let's see. We have my library. Let's see. Where is Derek at? Yes. So we have Derek. Uh this is probably so far the most probably the best polished uh mod so far. This is probably for paid mods. Yeah, for paid mods, this is probably the best so far. So Derek is actually a high quality mod. It's one of the few mods that I've seen live up to the quality and standards that you would need to meet to say, hey, this is a paid mod and it's worth it. It's also not that expensive either. So to me, Derek is probably the most um, the most valued paid mod. It's, it's the one that that everything works in it. There's no there's no bugs or glitches with Derek. OK, that's the important part. So let's get into it. Which one are we going to talk about first? Well, that's a tricky question because which one is going to take the longest to talk about? You know, I will start with the Ancient Mariner module. You want to know why? Because that is official Bethesda. So that has, you know, the the, the Ancient Mariner module is going to have way higher standards than, than any of the other mods because for one, it's paid for. For two, it's officially released from Bethesda. So their development team actually worked on it. That needs to have some pretty high standards. If, you're, if your actual development team is putting this in, it's more of a DLC rather than a mod. And you're charging DLC prices. So it needs to be very, very high quality. Let's go take a look. Now, the module itself is pretty nice. It's pretty relaxing. It's easy. It pops up right away. You don't have to purchase it anywhere. It's just already right there. You go to the ship technician. Sure. How about it?
you have the Ancient Mariner module. Now, when you put the module on, you could put it anywhere you would put a normal module. When you go in, all of the aesthetics are really cool. It has all of that old-time aesthetic feel. It has a ship feeling. It has the wood grain. Everything is detailed properly. Everything interacts properly with the environment. There are no glitches or clipping. There's nothing particularly uh, structurally wrong with the module, with the mod, or any of the furniture sets. The furniture sets all place accordingly. The lights all place on the ceiling. They are interactable. You know, there it's it's a standard module in furniture. It, they're high quality assets. Okay, there's nothing nothing glitchy or wrong about the assets. So you might be thinking, well, why isn't this mod worth it? Well, it depends on what you want out of it, right? If you, with this module, you basically can just live in your ship. You don't have to build an outpost because part of, part of this module, and let's be honest, part of the reason why people are paying for this module is so that they could get, you know, the, there's an infinite chest you can get with infinite storage. You know, it's a wooden chest. It's like a, you know, like a pirate chest, it's like a treasure chest. It has infinite storage. And for people who don't want to cheat or disable achievements or really heavily go in and, and modify their files, they want to get the Ancient Mariner mod so that they can have infinite storage on their ship. So the Ancient Mariner module lets you actually have, you know, um, everything you want on your ship because with the new build mode now, Okay, you could put the bounty, the bounty uh, terminal, you could put the quest terminals, you could put the crafting terminals, you could put the beds, you could put literally everything you need that you would want in the house or base, you can have on your ship now. So for that, it's pretty cool. And the furniture looks good. It's well detailed. The drawbacks are, for one, there's no there's nothing else tied to it. It's a, it's a small furniture set. It, it's it's a module. You can also decorate your your base too or your house with it. Um not too much to say about that. The aesthetic is really good. The artwork is really good. Uh there are there is one thing that they could have done, okay? There's one thing there's one thing that they could have done that would have set this mod apart. That it would have put this mod the next level. It w this mod would be totally worth it if it let you do this one thing. There's a there's a uh, record player, okay? There's a vinyl record player, you know, like a 45 vinyl. You put the little needle down. There's a old, an old-time record player. It's interactable. You click on it, and guess what? It only plays like a five second clip. I, I can't remember what melody it is. It plays like this bare bones, five second clip, nothing. What could they have done better there? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a guess. Okay. I'll let you guess. Yeah. Guess what? They could have put a fallout song in there. They already own the rights to it. They could have had it to where this record player, you turn it on and it plays the fallout music in your ship. Okay. That would have been worth it. They could have made where this record, you put the record player on and it plays some other old time music or some other track and it plays throughout your ship unless you turn it off. Okay. They could have done something with that record player to where you turn it on and it plays an actual song. 
and it sounds like it's vinyl. Well, you tell me why we're paying, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight dollars for these mods, and there's nothing, you know, extraordinary about them. There's nothing that adds to it. And believe me, if this if this record player actually played a Fallout song or some other old time song, people would be looking at it a little bit differently. They would say, oh, this is cool. This is worth it. This has a cool factor to it. It has an immersion to it. You can actually hear songs and play songs. So that's the one critique of that. If, if all they did was just add an actual song or tracks in here, that would have made the whole mod worth it. That would have been, all, that would have been totally worth it. That's all they had to do. Because, the, like I said, the furniture is cool. The chest is cool. You can live in your ship. And it, it, it. It does too, okay? If you like atmosphere, you will like this mod too, if you like the atmosphere of it. Because you're on like this hyper-technolized ship, right? The NASA Punk ship, and you have all these computers and terminals and all this stuff, electronics going on. When you're when you're walking through your ship and you first walk into the Mariner's module, or on your base or at your house, it's like a serenity. You feel serene, okay? You feel like, ah, I'm taking a break from all of the fighting, the action. You can chill out. And that's why it's so disappointing that when you turn on the record player, nothing happens. You know, it's just like a little five second like tune or something. That's that's the whole disappointing part because it has the atmosphere. It has the lights. You got the treasure chest. You got the wood aesthetics. You go in, you walk in, you're like, yeah, I'm chilling. I'm relaxing. I could store all of my stuff in this one chest and not have to take up ship cargo room. But. The record player doesn't doesn't do there's doesn't do anything. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. That is another good point though that I'm gonna lead into is that with this this module, this treasure chest, you don't need as much cargo space. So it frees your ship up to be you could you know your ship can be faster or you can make it look better because you don't need cargo. It also is good if you do want to do piracy or smuggling because you can just have, you know, protected cargo. You don't have to have a percentage of protected cargo. You can have just one protective, uh, you know, cargo bay, you know, cargo module. And then, you know, you only put stolen stuff. You only put contraband on your ship. Everything else goes on your Mariner chest. Then you can easily, you know, smuggle materials and contraband because you know that only your ship has the contraband on it. So that's another good point. That's a good way. That's a good reason to get this module. Is it worth it? What's the score? Is it worth it? I give this module a 7 out of 10. Like I said, everything's good. There's no glitches with it. It gets the job done. It gives you, it frees up access to do other things. It lets you have infinite storage. It gives you, you know, all the good stuff that I mentioned. 7 out of 10. Is it worth it? Again, with most of these mods... That's up to you. That's up to you if you want that kind of play style. It's, it's going to determine like if you're on Xbox or not makes a difference. It, what, what is worth it to you? You know, that that's up to you to decide. My score is a 7 out of 10. It would be a 9 out of 10 if the record player actually played a song. I don't know why I'm hung up on this, man. I, I don't know why I'm hung up on this, but the record player, dude, it, it, it's, got, it's, just, it's just annoying, dude. You, you click on this record player, it doesn't do anything. The record player doesn't do anything. To me, I mean, it's got to do something, man. It's, it's got to do something, right? Now, we could go into something good, a paid mod by the community that's actually really good, which is going to be my man Derek here. Dan, is that really you? My man Derek is really cool because... um. He's really cool. Uh, he's fully voiced. He has a lot of different dialogue, dialogue options. Everything's animated properly. He looks incredible. He looks amazing. He interacts with everything. Fully voiced. Full dialogue. Multiple, multiple different um, patterns and things that you can talk to him about. Multiple different conversations pop up. And in some cases, he's more interactable than your actual, like, vanilla companion. I knew it was you. Say, Dan, can you take me with you? I need to see the universe and have me some adventure. And if I know, Dan, I know that to you, adventure's your bread, excitement's your butter, and danger, why, to you, that's like strawberry jam to top it off. And I want a fun sandwich, Dan, 
and you make the best. Woot woot! Spin my nipple nuts and send me to Mars. This is gonna be exciting. That's the crazy part. He's, in some cases, he's more interactable than the actual vanilla companion because he he comments about, you know, when you're, you're going into a dangerous situation, he, he you know, he has the, the same, you know, battle, battle dialogue, you know, typical battle dialogue, hey, engaging enemy type of stuff. Uh, there is some, there is lore behind him too, because he, you know, he, he can't access his memory banks. So he's not really sure. And the more you travel with him, the more you unlock of this story, the more backstory you unlock about Derek. No. Access denied. I, I, I cannot remember. Access denied. He was. Access denied. And, and, and he access denied access denied access denied there's no glitches with him whatsoever you can have him as a separate companion so he doesn't take up a companion slot you can have him as a separate companion and you can have him and vasco together i i don't recommend it because these these robots get in the way. I do not recommend having Vasco and Derek on your on your team at the same time at all. If anything, I wish Derek was smaller so he wouldn't get in the way like a, you know a giant robot does. The good thing about Derek is though that when he follows you, he gives you a lot of you know he gives you a lot of room for for movement. He doesn't follow you and and uh, bum rush you or get or follow you and do weird weird things. It seems like his, his pathing is good, is basically what I'm saying. He has good pathing. Uh, the voice acting is pretty phenomenal. Uh, it actually, the voice the voice acting kind of reminds me of Anthony Hopkins. I mean, it's really good. You know, Anthony Hopkins in, uh, Dar uh, what is it, Rebel Moon? Kind of reminds me of that. You know, it's a robotic voice, pretty cool. He calls you Dan for some reason. I haven't uh, gotten to that part of the story where maybe that unlocks later. I'm not sure if that does, but he calls you Dan. And that's the only minor annoyance with uh, with Derek is that he says the word Dan way too much. You Dan, Dan. Hi Dan. Say Dan. I don't know what Dan stands for. I don't know why he's calling me Dan, but th there's too much Dan, 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 Dan. That's the only negative point about this is that he uses Dan too much. Other than that, like. Other than that, like if you talk to him, there's this cool part where it's like you can tell me something interesting and there's a recording, a recording playing and it tells you interesting stuff about the universe or theories or physics or about planets. What do you need? And it, it interacts that way. There's also personal dialogue with him. Like I said, every time you speak to him, there are multiple lines and, and paragraphs of dialogue that you go through with Derek. And he's pretty cool, but I will say that he is useless in battle. If you're late game, he is useless in battle. He will get taken out with one hit. So I wish there was a way or that he was could be scaled better for, um, you know, for combat, for battle. I know he's not really for that because he's an extra added companion, but if they could just make him tankier, that would be cool where he didn't die very much. You know, I, I, he it's just kind of weird to see when you board an enemy ship, he'll just be instantly dead, you know, on the like laying on the ground, you know, like Vasco, he'd just be instantly dead. It would be cool like if he could just just beef him up a little bit to where I don't know. I don't want to say make him invincible, but I kind of do. All right, now let's get to the low point of, of these reviews, okay? That's going to be the Starfield Compendium. I'll just say right off the bat, this mod is not ready for prime time. All of the fe most of the features listed aren't even available, and it's just a basic search function right now. So you go to you go you go on your menu system, you click on an element it shows you what planets the element is on. You can click on multiple different elements, multiple different, you know, uh, combinations, right? To try to filter through kind of like an Amazon filter. You're filtering through to see what planets have that. So in that aspect, it's really, really cool because, you know, like you could see I wanted lead and titanium or you want lead and, um, you know, uh, some other material and you want um, 
you know, rare fibers or something like that. And you can plug it in. You put it in the filter. Hey, I want this rare, you know, fiber. I want this rare material. I want adhesive. I want lead. I want adhesive. You know, I want titanium. I need aluminum. Whatever it is, you can click into those little things and it'll give you a list of planets. And a lot of times what I've found is some of the rare materials, as you'll see, some of the rare materials are only on one planet. So you'd never find this stuff unless you Googled it. But that's the thing. It's like you could pay for this or you could actually Google it, you know. So in that sense, it's pretty cool because you can filter through. You can find those rare materials. On the other hand, I, like I said, I, I'm, I feel bad about this. I do because, you know, Modric's put a lot of time into that. I feel bad about this. But for being paid for, it's not up to par. Because the layout, the way you use it, the interface is just all bad. You There's no zoom feature. You can't, you, if you're on a bigger screen TV and you're sitting kind of far back, you can't, the, the uh, elements aren't really legible. So you have to kind of know the color coordination. Um, the, the way you go through planets, it, it's, um, it's very basic. It's very, it's very crude. It's like it, it was, it was rushed to the mod market, um, which is cool. If this was free, like I said, no problem, but because this is paid for, I can't really, I can't, I can only recommend it for specific people who, who don't care about spending money on things. If you don't care about spending money on, uh, on mods or anything like that, and this little bit of convenience is worth it to you, and you don't feel like having it on your phone, like a Google, Googling it on your phone while you play, hey, where can I get this? Where can I get that? You just want it in the game and it's seamlessly, it just comes right up in the game and you go and you pick through and you filter it. Then yeah, you could you, if you want you could pay for this mod, but I, I can't remember how much it was. It doesn't even tell you anymore. I think it was six. I think it was eight hundred credits, six hundred or eight hundred credits. So I mean, it's not cheap. It's not like a hundred dollar credit, hundred credit mod. It's a couple of hundred credits at least. And the interface is just very poor. How you interact with it, it's just there's. I don't know what I don't know how they they could I don't know how they could have made that better. But it's just, it's just, it's like, it's like if you went back to 1990 and you were using a use, you know, you, you did UX design in 1990. It just, it just, it, it, none of it, none of it works very well. It just doesn't, you know, I hate, I hate to say that because like I said, the modders put time and effort into this and I don't want to ding on it, but for being paid for, what does it really add? The good things are you can filter through rare materials. It will take you to distant planets, planets you would never normally go to. That part is really cool. And actually, because of this mod, I actually found Astra. This mod, it will get you to explore more. So if you're okay with spending money on, you know, a mod and it has a, we went over it, it has a bunch of features that aren't actually finished or in, in the mod yet. So it's not, to me, it's not ready. But if you do want to search, you do want to have these features you know, you're, and you're okay with paying for a mod. Yeah, it's worth it. Other than that, I, I have to give this mod a score a five out of 10. This has got to be a five out of 10 right here. It's got to be a five out of 10 because it's paid for, man. I'm telling you, it just, it, it it's not all there. And I'm giving you the information that you need, you know, in the review in this video to decide for yourself, of course, because you could see for yourself, Hey, do I want this? Do I want to pay, you know, 500, 600 credits for, for this, for this search feature? Is the exploration worth it to me? Is, you know, finding, hey, this one planet with rare material on it, is this worth it? Does this add immersion or would I rather just use my phone and Google and do it for free and not pay for it? That part, uh, that part is up to you. That part is up to you, but you have all the information you need to make that decision. Keep in mind, there are a laundry list of features that aren't in this mod yet. So this, this review, this overview is based on what is currently available because it is live and it, you know, it is up for download and it is monetized. So I can't judge it by what might be coming down the road. I have to judge it on its own merits right now, what I see in front of me and how it works in the game. And you can see Xbox support, system level, system faction, list of planet moon uh, biomes, 
skill required to establish an outpost, order by planet moon name, system name, local time, blah, 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 filter by UT ship, filter by name, filter by same planet or same system, organic resources that cannot be extracted, extracted automatically, and much more. But that's not there yet. That's not there yet. So if you want to wait on this mod until they actually put this stuff in, that's probably a good idea. Those are the mod reviews for the week. And I wanted to go over the paid ones specifically and the ones that are for people who don't want to alter the game in a, a lore breaking fashion. In other words, I'm not doing Star Wars mods because I'm doing reviews on mods for the Starfield players that don't actually want to alter the game. They just want to enhance the vanilla Starfield experience, basically. And these paid mods are targeting that audience, right? These paid mods aren't targeting the, the you know, the the heavy, the people who heavily mod Starfield and have all the mods and the Star Wars stuff. These mo these paid mods are targeting casual gamers, the casual, you know, average audience, the, the Starfield players who play the vanilla game and they just want to enhance it. Because more than likely, the people who are heavily modding Starfield, they already know what's worth it and what's not for them. They're going to download. They're going to be on PC. They're going to be playing the PC mods or download them from Nexus. They're not probably going to spend too much money on the creations. But even so, this could be for everybody. This lets you know, hey, is this worth it or not? And flat, right off the bat, Ancient Mariner Module, 7 out of 10. Again, that's subjective. Derek is definitely worth it. Derek is an is an eight out of ten. I would say that there's there there aren't too many negatives about paying for and downloading Derek. Okay, he says Dan too much. That's about it. But Derek is absolutely worth it. The Starfield Compendium, five out of ten. That's only worth it in in a specific case where you want to do exploration, you want to mine resources, and you don't want to use Google to find it. And you're okay with all the missing features right now because it's missing a bunch of features and it costs more than the other mods. So if you're okay with that, then it's for you. Otherwise, yeah, that's the score five out of 10 for that. In conclusion, I'm glad that they updated the .ini file patch. I'm glad they had the patch for the .ini file. That way we can't, we won't have as many corrupted mods. We really need a polished and clean, you know, um, palette for these mods. Creation kit, creation club, Needs to be really smooth, needs to be really clean to make it worth it because it is being monetized. And like I said, if it's monetized, it's going to be a higher, held to a higher standard. It has to be. All right, that's the video. Hopefully you found this helpful, useful. If you did, like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.